I'm Simply Lisa, and this is our Simply live stream. And I'm still getting ready. Um, I can't find my tripod. You know it's right here someplace, but I can't find it. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll have a signal outdoors here. Um, how am I going to prop the phone up is the question. So I brought a battery pack outside just to uh, make sure if the battery's starting to go that I can plug the phone back in. Where are we at? And you know what? The glare on the phone, I'm not going to be able to read hardly anything. So let's see. I think I touched a button. I didn't mean to. We have to be careful with me touching a button. Um, did they update this thing again? I don't know where. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Live chat. I want to see everything. There we are. Okay. Who's here? I see Mary. I'm going to be squinting for a minute. Mary, uh, Sonia, welcome. Uh, who's that? Catherine, Donna K, uh, I think it's K, no, Donna R. Um, well, like I've looked in the car, I've looked in the shed. That means I can't find anything. And if I turn the phone sideways, I bet, yeah, I bet Google will, I mean, uh, how, how am I going to do this? Um, YouTube's going to scream at me if I put the function because of what I started. And, of course, well, let's see. How much battery life do I have? 89. I better be careful with the battery. For a short time. Oh, poop head. How am I going to do this? All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to unplug the battery for a few minutes. Let's hope I don't start losing battery because it, it'll go quick. All right, I'm going to set you up. How am I going to set you up? Poop. I don't know where I found the tripod before, but now I don't know where it is. All right, this is stuff. We were going to talk about kitchen stuff and travel stuff and whatever I can sometimes take with me. You guys recognize stuff all over. Okay, so I was getting ready to fix my food for today. And I was going to show you how we were going to do that, but not finding the tripod is going to make this hard. So today, my food is going to be a pound and a half of um, beef and an avocado. And of course, I'll have water and I might even have coffee. I also was going to make coffee. In, we use in the Kelly kettle and the... Yeah. French press. Okay. So where I'm in the, on the patio, this place is going to become a screened in kitchen over time. And so I have not gotten the dishes washed, but that's because I ran out of water because my water jug, my five gallon water jug decided to spring a leak in the car. So I had five gallons of water all over the floor of the car. So um, some time ago, in rural places, in this part of the country, there's so many rodents that anything metal, one, lasts longer, and two, keeps rodents out. And so I picked this cabinet up off of Amazon for $99 not long ago because I needed my pots and pans and things to be out here. And there's more weather out here than inside. And anyway, so that's what I did. And that's, I just reached in and got the uh, French press. Now, if you guys buy a French press for traveling, stainless steel and a not too big a one is a great idea. But don't do what I did and get the wooden handles if you're going to travel with it. I got the wooden handles because they were beautiful. That's the only reason. So, um... I have some things set up over here. And so let's get my meat in the fry pan and get that started. And then it can be cooking while we talk. 
And uh, please ask questions. Um, somebody online who's a moderator, would you please put the housekeeping stuff out about the three cues so I can see stuff? Because especially today being out back, the glare on the phone may make it hard for me to read, to see. So what I'm going to do, this is a Vargo brand. Usually, it, yeah, this one's not stamped. Okay. Vargo brand titanium travel grill stove thing. So it works wonderfully with charcoal. I don't think that I've ever put a wood fire in it, but it has a couple of wonky things that you'll see if you look at it online. And one of the wonky things is that it has a hinge top, which is nice, but um, when it doesn't have anything in it, if you have this up high, uh, up on, if you have this not hinged, it will fall over. Okay. But that's cause it's super lightweight. It makes it, you know, really easy to hike with and stuff like that. The other wonky thing is the way that it folds right here, there's a gap and I had to, uh, pull this, uh, widen this so that it would stay connected. The, um, I know what I mean. You probably don't know what I mean. But one of the beauties of this over some of the other things that I own is that not only can I use it for charcoal or wood, and yes, it's tiny. You see my hand, right? It's tiny. Um, I think it's like maybe eight or 10 inches across the top of it. But I can use an alcohol stove. This happens to be my very well-used, yeah, you can't see the brand anymore. There's a little tiny foot thing right there. It's a Tokes titanium siphon alcohol stove. That's one. I can use that in there. And uh, that's what we're going to use this morning for my, for my meat. Oh yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to use that for my meat. And then sometimes I just use Sterno in a can. Now Sterno in a can, this I can pick up two at Walmart for I don't know, $7 or something like that. They don't last weeks and weeks. They last a few times. What does it say on it? Something like two hours worth of heat or something, but uh, two and a half hours right there. But um, uh, the way I use it, I can stretch a can a long time. I can do stuff with it. But so that makes, because this will fit in here as well. In fact, let's let's use the Sterno for my meat this today. This makes it, Sterno, you can use inside. It won't hurt you. And um, and I mean that like in, in an enclosed area. So inside the cabin, I can use that whenever I, I want to. But um, you can also use it. Uh, um, I forgot what I was saying. Okay. Anyways, but so it's safe to use inside as well as outside. Now, I do not know how I'm going to try to set the phone here. Oh, I forgot. I have the camera. Let's change the camera to forwards. There's my face. And now I'm going to set it, lean it against the coffee pot. I hope you can see something. So, Sterno, like alcohol, when you light it, you don't always see the flame. So you have to be willing to do, first couple of times could be scary. Anything new can be scary to somebody. Oh, let me, have you guys ever seen the inside of a Sterno can? This one I've used. So I'm going to shake it sideways so that I'm bringing some of the, liquidy stuff up to the surface and then you need to learn i'm going to light it with a long lighter now i saw it light but you you will have to learn to watch for heat signatures and not necessarily flame because standing right over there now i can do this with my hand up high i don't feel much go down a little lower a little lower yeah there it is okay so it's lit it's running um and then this is 
one of my new favorite pans. I don't even know that you can see what I'm doing, but okay. Let me turn you this way a little bit. So this is a Boundless Voyage. Yes, I think you can see that because I can see my neck uh, with all the, the glare out here. So this is a Boundless Voyage titanium. I think it's eight inch fry pan. And I made sure I got one that had a lid and that had, a, that had handles. Now, some people don't like that. And um, there, there are times when the handles don't feel super strong, but you know what? I always have a, I always have a grippy handle that goes with another pot set or something that I can always use if I want to. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to open this package of meat. I haven't had time. I ran to the store this morning. You know, it's nearly an hour process to run to the store from where I'm at. But I, because of the water, I was out of water completely. So, um, okay. So now I'm going to put a little bit of water in the bottom of the fry pan. And I'm going to put that on the stove part. On this, the little Vardo, Vargo grill with the stern this is going to cook slow but we're going to talk that way i don't have to tend to it while that's starting i'm going to wow this is going to be fun isn't it i don't know that you can even see what i'm doing i'm going to walk over here to the sink okay let's try that and i'm going to rinse the meat because i haven't had a chance to wash the dishes or clean the meat before I cook it. But hey, I promised y'all some cooking and some, um, and I'm trying not to drop it, right? Okay. So this is a pound and a half of wait a minute and I'll read the label, but um, basically, isn't it nice we're outside? I can drip and drizzle and not worry about it. Um, so it's, it's basically a pound of stew meat. I mean, a pound and a half of stew meat. It's what was on sale at the store up the street. And I'm just going to put all of this right in here. And at some point, I didn't bring the salt out here, and I want to talk to you all. At some point, I will um, get the salt, and I'll put some salt on it. But for right now, I'm just going to let this sit here and slowly cook, because the sterno can is outside, and it's not going to be fast. All right, so what was the meat exactly? Here's the label. Oh, you don't get to see the actual price. It was, yeah, boneless beef stew meat, is all it said. And it had a tag of $7.49 a pound. But you can see what's left of the manager's special. I paid $4 for it. It was less than this. And they, they take the tag off when I pay for it. So that meat is on cooking. And let me put a windscreen up. Um, Wendy, you're going to have to just bear with mom on this. Okay? Because breakfast is going to be lunch instead of breakfast, Miss Wendy. Because of the way I'm cooking it and everything else. And now I'm going to reach underneath here. This is very dirty because it's been outside for months. But this is... Um, technically a windscreen. Um, it's similar to the ones that Bob Wells uses or, or sells online. Um, let me move that. Let me move the lid for the sterno and let me put a couple of rocks. Whoops, pull this back up. Let me pull this forward a little bit. Put a couple of rocks back here so that this screen won't, if the wind blows, it won't fly away on us. 
or end up being somewhere else. Okay, so um, a windscreen with sterno. I wouldn't hike with that windscreen, but a windscreen with sterno definitely makes, um, concentrates the heat better so it'll cook better. Now, that will take a while to cook because of the way that's happening. This little stove, the parts are in a bag over here. This is a little charcoal grill. Um, I found it for something like $12 online at stainless steel. It works so freaking good. But my fry pan won't fit on it, so I bought the Vargo one because I needed something that would fit that fry pan. Um, this one does fit both. This is um, my small um, thermal pot, the tiny thermal pot. This one fits on here nicely. Um, so I got out the parts for this. Here's the grill grate. Like one hamburger patty fits on this, but it doesn't fold flat, super ultra lightweight. This uh, raises the charcoal above the um, floor on it so that it burns really well. So that's an excellent little charcoal stove. I was going to use it consistently, but it was annoying that I couldn't pack it up really tight. And then um, I had... Okay, I had this thing for something else, and it fits on there if I want to use this for something different, the, the little grill grate. Um, okay, I was going to make coffee this way, but I'm worried about the, about the uh, cell signal. So I also recently, I am not opening this, I have not washed it, people, but I just recently bought this Keith Titanium. It's actually a rice cooker. See how it fits so nicely on there as well. Now, the Kelly kettle, I've reviewed this in other places, but basically here's where the water goes. This is a whistler, so we, when it boils, you can hear it. The old ones had a cork. I had an old one years ago. I don't have it anymore. The middle of this is a chimney. And so this bowl down here is the fire bowl, and you make your fire where the stick is. I have it basically set up to start, but I haven't started it, okay? And <laughs> obviously. And so the fire comes out of here. Well, when you buy, you get this universal stove stand that goes with it. Now, this stand can either go under the bottom or it can go right like this on the top. And now this is the pot stand and you can use it like a rocket stove. In order to use it like a rocket stove, you have to have water in the kettle. You have to keep the water level really high or full in this kettle when you're cooking. But then you could conceivably put a pot on top or a coffee pot or a, um, let's see, would my fry pan fit? I'm not sure that I'm holding the camera good for you guys, but um, okay, my my fry pan would fit. Yes, uh, that would be a little wiggly, tippy. I wouldn't like that, but anyway. And uh, for you people who think Sterno is not doing anything, that fry pan's warm. It's not boiling, it's not hot yet. But so that can be used for other, it becomes a hobo stove. When you add this, you remove the kettle and you add this on top and keep the fire going. I have not found this to work well with charcoal, which is why I was hunting for this. This makes me really good hot water, especially for a bath. This is the largest Kelly kettle. They make smaller ones. The smaller, I've forgotten which size, but the smaller ones you can actually use with a Trangia or Esbit style. Um, uh, spirit stove, uh, so alcohol stove. You can use in the small ones. You can't in the big one. The big one really is only sticks or pine cones or trash, and it works like the bomb. And it boils water really fast and will fill this 
1.1 liter coffee pot really easy. So making fast, quick coffee in the morning and having enough water left over for your washcloth in your, in your little wash up bowl is awfully nice. That's why I carry that big one. I'd like to get the next smaller size, but I don't want too many things. Now here at the cabin, I also have a fire pit and that stainless kettle stays over there all the time. It holds a gallon of water. Um, when the fire pits go in, there's hot water. That's, that's a thing. So um, the rice cooker works really well, but I ran into a problem with rice. Oh, I have to tell you. Cuteness, puppy TV. She has a headstander beetle. I think you can see her. I can't see the phone for the glare, but she's playing with one of those headstander stink bug beetles. <laughs> she's playing with it. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, dirty dishes, but it's how I got to show you some stuff. Here at the cabin, I keep things like big spoons. Like I have a solid one, a slotted one, a... Uh, spatula, a big knife, and a ladle. That's here. Okay. Stay, stays here all the time. I prefer enamel, old school enamel, lots of stuff for lots of stuff, but not for everything. And so I have, okay, so that lid goes on that pot. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing you my dirty dishes, right? This is a maybe two quart or it's not two quarts one liter maybe little bale handle enamel pot love it wish this was actually my travel uh thermal pot because it's just a little wider on the bottom let's Let's try it over here on the Kelly kettle. See, it's a little wider on the bottom, so it fits on there really nicely, okay? And this one, because it's tall and skinny, which is my actual small thermal pot thing, it doesn't feel, fit well tall and skinny. And so I'm always worried that I'm gonna spill it, okay? But those are some of the things I have. I love this size. I think they're seven inch. It's dirty. I'm trying not to show you how dirty it is. But this is my favorite size bowl. I use it for food. I use it for my washcloth to wash up with. But that's my favorite size. And I like that it's enamel. Um, the only cup that fits in my cup holder so far in the car right now is this. It's a cheap plastic thing. I would like to get rid of the plastic. I saw something while I was on my trip, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes, but I haven't had a chance to go back and look. This is a little titanium fry pan. It holds one hamburger patty um, and has handles. It came with a set of pots. Um, Brooke, uh, uh, Betty Jo, has the little saucepan that came with it because it was useless to me. But I use this off and on often, often. And this fits perfectly when I'm using my uh, candelier. It fits on top of that candelier really well. And it makes a lid on a couple of other pots I have. So that's useful. You don't want to see anything else there. Am I dirty? <laughs> my dirty. I'm in my kitchen, people. I'm real. Y'all know I'm real. Okay, you're back. Okay. So the big pot, uh, thermal pot, I can teach you more about that. <laughs> I can teach you more about that. What I'm going to want you to do soon is to ask me lots of questions because I am I bet you've got questions. But um, the other thing is, is just showing you what I have right now. Um, I am not uh, thrilled with how I have it packed at the moment, but that's because I'm kind of between a bunch of stuff and I know y'all want an update too. I'm going to go remove that blue pot from the top and, uh, okay, let's, let's try it. Uh, it seems like I lose you if I go to the sink area. So I, I just don't want the wind to kick up and 
blow my little pot away. This one can just go down here. I don't know what you can see. I'm sorry. Um, okay. And let's take a quick peek at this. Um, I'm seeing water boiling in the center. I need to, wherever I put the spoon I had, I had a spoon because I opened the can with it. You see, I'm just as normal as anybody else. I misplace things without, without even meaning to misplace them. All right, where did I put the freaking spoon? Oh, here it is behind something. All right, let's, uh, let's take a second. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing because I need to hold the handle too. Can't do this with one hand. But man, I feel bad that I didn't find the tripod. So I, all I'm going to do is flip this hot meat from the center off to the side. You older, older people know these tricks. To You just move the food around so that all the food touches that heat and gets good and hot. So you see, stir don't will cook. It just is taking time. And if you've got time or you're in a slow mood, it's no big deal. Right, Miss Wendy? Right. And yes, I sometimes let Wendy eat raw meat, but not right now. I'm not in a mood right now. This is the little vintage cup that Mary gave me last year. I think it was last year. Um, I use that off and on. It's tiny, but I use it. Um, you know, I always carry some dish towels, but I also use paper towels. It depends on my mood more than anything. So, okay, so here's a clean bowl. See these bowls? I love these bowls. So I try to carry two of those. I try to carry two plates like this. I don't get the ones with the stainless steel edge. They suck. Um, and I'm not paying that money for them either. They're more expensive. I'm just not doing it. Um, I have all these bags from all my cute little stove things and coffee makers. And um, this is part of a stove, but it doesn't work at higher elevations. It works at sea level better. It goes with a different stove I have. Um, another titanium, I think. Yeah, this is a titanium stove thing stand. It works okay. Um, this this was the bag for my water kettle that's inside. You guys have seen that before. Let's see. I have a Vargo Titanium. There you can see the brand now. Vargo Titanium. This is a Sierra cup. Sometimes uh, if I'm cooking just enough like stew beef like I'm doing today for just like breakfast or something, I will cook it in here instead of using the big pot. It depends on what I have going on. But like today, I know that I have a bunch of work to do this afternoon because now that I got some water, don't like this lid, but I picked it up to fit something. Um, uh, I picked up water so I could get some extra done. I have my Cita Summit. It is silicone mug. I'm not in love with silicone. I know that silicone affects our health, but it folds up so flat that sometimes, well, I got it because of the color, because it has measuring marks on it, and because, um, and because it folds I don't know if I'm how long I will continue with something like that. This is that new coffee fit off of our, our um, Sundays bought me. Uh, it's, I'll look it up, Helio, Heli Helix brand or something. So this is the little titanium stove I've showed you before. The little, um, I usually use this to boil water and the other, the grill one that the food's on right now uh, fits in this little bag. And the two of these make me a two burner stove and it works really nice. And I can get really quick hot coffee made and I can do almost anything. And if I was hiking again, that's what I would take with me. Um, okay. And of course I have, you know, a knife and a, yeah. I don't need the cutting board. I know how to do things. All right. So I'm showing you all those things. Love. Uh, I used to have a 
a wine glass that said, uh, I'm, I make fires and drink wine. Oh no, I make fires. Uh, I, I build fires and make wine disappear. What's your superpower? I thought that was cute. Um, uh, so I like the tumbleweed style. If when I can get them, I like these for starting fires. I don't have to have that. Um, I have practiced many, many times a uh, one match fire or with my ferro rod or whatever else. I also own a Pico 85 Pico grill. This is nice, but unfortunately with so many of my pots being tall and skinny, this is hard to use with a tall and skinny pot. So, but it doesn't weigh anything. It's like, it doesn't weigh anything. All right, what else have I got that I was gonna show you? Um, and then I'll start, uh, cause I'm feeling like I wanna rest a little bit. I might start looking at uh, comments here pretty soon because I bet you, you all have some questions. So, turn some of this around. There we go, okay. It's hard to show you lots of stuff. Oh, let me show you this too. Y'all know about my enamel coffee mugs I got down in Mexico, but you can order them on Amazon. You just gotta buy a set of six if you want them. And my titanium, uh, Evernew titanium uh, tea kettle pot, love it. Uh, my titanium Yuko sport, love that as well. Um, okay. I don't know. Okay, let me check your messages. Whew. Let's see what's going on out here. So how far did I get? Okay, I saw some of these hellos. Let me turn this back around. Just woke up, so it might be a little off. Bad night, bad dreams. So oh, I'm sorry, Catherine. Catherine, I think I'm going to try to get out and see you this week. Um, of course, I have all those uh, DVDs that you guys wanted to buy from me. So I'm probably going to do that this week. Um, we can talk. I'm sorry you've had a hard time with that. Um, hey, Ken. Bailey. It's a beautiful morning. And I think that my attitude changes when the weather gets better. Um, I mentioned it to the therapist last week, but I'm, I'm really feeling like that. Hey, um, uh, Shadow Wolf, nice to see you. Hi, George. Um, Skipper Doodle. Sorry about that, Skip. You and I ought to text at some point. Iris. Hi, Iris. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Kenneth. So Kenneth Bailey says, um, I believe that natural beef and avocado is a wonderful, healthy choice. And I think that your ongoing awareness of healthful living is one reason we respect you so much. Um, I ran into a little problem. Okay, I don't know how to go at this exactly. But over the winter, there were many times when I could not get off my own property to go get to resupply groceries. Um, and because my budget had been low when I returned home, I decided just in case there was a crazy emergency, I decided to put 10 pounds of rice and 10 pounds, no, and uh, maybe seven pounds of black beans in a storage spot just in case, because I didn't want to get too hungry. Well, I ended up having to eat them and I've gained weight and I'm very disappointed. I didn't feel good, and um, I, you know, returned to the IBS really quickly, and it didn't work well for me, but I was trying. Yes, my single signal cuts in and out a lot. I apologize. Stephen Ballet, nice to see you. Love you, man. I haven't seen you in a long time. 
Um, how is the weather? It's great. I think that it would be okay um, if people were starting to come this way and you're close enough friends to me to be asking, come this way. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I, if we get a cold night, I don't think it's going to be bad this year. Um, I can show you how I do dishes, but not right now because of the signal. I'm, I'm struggling with my signal being outside and y'all saw that. So, um, yes, nights are still in the thirties the and forties. Yeah. Um, yeah, Havasu would be hot. Uh, okay. You're cool in Texas. Isn't that nice, Sonia? That's lovely. Um, so, Sonia B., I will talk to you about the thermal pot. Now, somebody tell me if I need to go get the parts so I can show you better but I can explain it by speaking. So let's see if that's good enough. But both of those pots I showed you, I have a little one, which cost a lot of money when I bought it because it, it's coming from Japan. And the bigger one, not so expensive, but still pricey. Um, those pots go inside of another outer insulated pot that fits them just right and has a locking lid. And so you can travel with them or you can, um, you know, take them to an event or something like that. And the lids will keep things warm and whatever. So what you do is you put the food in it and you bring the food to a boil and you either, depending on what it is, you bring it to a boil, you take it off, you put it in the thing. Or if it's uh, bigger stuff, like a roast or something, you boil it for 10 or 15 minutes and then you put it in the it, you know, take it off the heat and put that pot inside the other thermal thing. And what it does is it keeps cooking for hours. So it acts like a crock pot. It acts like a crock pot with no power. So you choose which way you're going to heat the stainless steel pot. You could put it on a campfire. It gets dirty, but you just wash the thing. The um, I can't remember if the little thermal pot, pots thing, if it's stainless steel inside. It must be. Uh, the big one I know for sure is stainless steel inner part of the thermal pot. pot, pot. So when I take the stainless steel pot, it's touching stainless steel inside the insulated part. So um, that's why I figured out that I can even put it on a campfire. So I can make a stew out on the campfire and then put it in that pot and close it up. And hours later, it's still boiling hot. Um, or there, there's tricks. So... Um, it, I could do, you know, a week long classes on how to use that pot to bake bread in to, you can use turkey roasting bags in them so you don't have to wash them. Um, uh, but if you're putting them on a campfire, you're going to have to wash it anyways, because the outside will get sooty, but sometimes I'll use it for a month before I wash the soot off. Depends on my situation, but they're, um, yeah. So they work like a crock pot but without any power. So you heat up the inner pot, bring the stuff to boil, then you put it inside the other part and it keeps cooking. So that's how that works. Um, good morning, Jeremy. That's nice, Steve, that you, you uh, lurk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Steve, um, I often have said, oh, I'm responding without reading your comment. Let me read your comment. So Stephen Ballet said, still have some freezing nights forecast for Christopher Creek area this coming week, but it's getting better. Yeah. And my old 
rule of thumb was um, not to come back up here until the week after Passover. Passover happens to be this coming Monday. So um, it's, 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 it's really been nice. I haven't had a fire in a week and a half or more or something. I don't know. It's been a while. So that's that. Uh, Catherine's talking about her new hound dog. Um, Henry, nice to see you. Craziest thing I ever did. No freaking idea. Are we talking, are we staying on subject with food? Don't ask me because I experiment. Um, I don't know what the craziest thing I ever did was. Because I've done some crazy stuff. Um, per perhaps a crazy thing I perhaps did. But I'm not so sure it was crazy. I was returning from living in Central America to living in the United States. And I knew that on my income, I was going to end up being homeless. Because I couldn't. Somebody had stolen my money, and um, so uh, the van that I had sent money back to live in, it was a whole si weird situation. So without giving you details or the exact story, basically, I decided that I knew how to walk in the woods. So rather than be homeless in a city or have people throw cans at me out of pickup trucks or something, I would go hike on the Appalachian Trail and I'd never hiked a day in my life. Now I've walked in the woods lots and uh, I hiked, I hiked a lot of miles on the Appalachian Trail. I did not finish it. I didn't have that as my goal. I was just living in the woods and walking every day and living in the woods. And I was going forward but I never like had the goal to actually like get to Mount Katahdin, although I thought I would. I hadn't researched it that way. So that might be a silly thing I've done. Hi, Kate. So yeah, it's hard, hard for me to say what's the silliest thing I've done. I, I got no idea. I try things. I'm, I'm one of those people who will um, you know, jump off the deep end or pull the band, rip the bandaid off and not wait. And so, although as I'm older, I have to be a little more careful. So, um, do you have more questions about that stuff? I want to go back out and stir the pot and I'm not sure, like I said, I don't know what I did with my freaking tripod. I really seriously do not have one clue in the world where that thing is. Um, and uh, I don't think it's missing. I just think that I stuck it somewhere to get it out of my way and I can't remember where that somewhere was and I feel kind of silly about the whole thing. Um, and I don't, yeah. and I can't even find my, oh, you know what? Hey, this is reality stuff. I'm just looking again for the tripod and went, I, I wonder if it's in this electronic bag. Nope. It was a good try though. Nope. nope. My, my keyboard for when I actually used to write all kinds of things and need to work on that again. Nope, but that's where my pink thingy is for when I want to watch a movie. And nope, none of my tripods are in here. Okay, well, that was worth a shot. Okay, so I want to go stir the meat again, but I don't want to lose your si the signal with you guys. So bear with me. And while I'm doing this process, um, put the three uppercase Qs in front of it for me, but ask me questions so when we come back where I can read easier, um, that I can answer your questions for you, okay? So let's walk out there together and see what we can do.
Oh, sure. There's been lots of serial killers on the Appalachian Trail. No, no news to me. The, but the hardest part for me when I was hiking was, that was in 2011. The hardest part while I was hiking was when I hitchhiked to town to get a resupply and the old, old country Tennessee man, Southern app, yeah, guy that picked me up tried to rape me. That was not fun. So, yeah, I I was about to open the door and roll out of the truck while it was moving when he saw somebody he recognized and let me out of the truck. <laughs> so, okay, let's walk outside together again. Yeah, Wendy, you could come too. Okay, Wendy, go in that way. Okay, we are not walking over near the sink because of the... Uh, signal will drop and i do still i'm willing to still show you what always rides in one saddle bag there are the flat fold really small um charcoal grill so that i always have a way to cook food with me even if it's not like whatever it's always with me so there's a little bit of charcoal there's a grill there's a windscreen for the grill and the big bag I used to have this a long time ago when I went to RTRs and I repurchased it when I first got back here that's another portable grill that can be used with charcoal and has you know the fire pit top the screen top but it also has a full size 21 inch grill grate on it so if i want to cook for a whole lot of people i just build a fire or put char put a whole bag of charcoal in that and then it folds up into that bag but um for traveling but basically my point being i was going to set it up for you i didn't get to it and with signal being live it just feels hard to do so let's come check see sterno cooks can you see it boiling I think you can see it boiling. So I know Sterno for some young people just seems like it's such an old school thing. But, you know, when, when you're poor or when the shit hits the fan or whatever and you can't buy things the same, there's directions on... Uh, on YouTube University, you can learn how to make your own sterno fuel, which is basically jellied alcohol. I'm not allergic to this. Most people are not allergic to the, it. It doesn't stink. To me, it doesn't stink. I don't know. You, you know, everybody's different. Okay, I'm trying to stir this. This is a lot of meat in my pot. I mean, sometimes I give myself more room to stir. And if we weren't on film and it being challenging for my signal, I would have probably cut those great big chunks in smaller pieces, but it doesn't matter. You know, I have good teeth and strong jaws. <laughs> okay, that sounds silly, silly, all kinds of silly. I want to make a pot of coffee with y'all, but I'm not sure I have enough sticks in the Kelly kettle. I I bet some of you wouldn't mind seeing it burning. So I'm uh, going to move some down. Okay, use use the camera moving with my hand. Don't need this. Oh, when I'm using my alcohol stove, especially this one, I tend to use this for my fuel. Okay? It's the easiest to get, especially if you're um, like... Uh, if you're traveling or like when I was hiking on the Appalachian Trail, you um, uh, are able to get the fuel in the, uh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time. Um, you can get it at most, most uh, auto parts stores or gas stations and places like that. So it's possible to get these things when you're traveling, which some stuff is harder to get. Now, I don't want to burn my pretty pot, so I'm going to move it to the table, which is full of stuff. And we're going to 
I've decided we're going to light the Kelly kettle. And no, I can't read your comments while I'm out here doing this. Uh, I mean, I see stuff down there. Keep, please ask me a whole bunch of questions. So when I go back inside where I can see the screen of the phone better, where I can, um, I can uh, answer you. So I'm going to take one of these little tumbleweed things. I'm going to stuff it in here. I may not need that because I there's some paper in the bottom. Um, I would have shown you, but if I lift that up and I only am using one hand, uh, I run the risk of of making a mess with it all. So I don't want to make a mess. I'm like, this is the... Okay, and I love matches, but you know what? The lighter is here, and I only have one hand. One hand for, the, for you guys and one hand for it. And, and I don't know if the, if the phone will catch the flame, but I see the smoke already. That's how that works, okay? Like I said, I'm not sure I got enough sticks in it to boil it. But we'll see. And I filled the water tank before you, before I turned the camera on, the phone on. So I'm trying to get that tank of water filled up by a neighbor because my neighbor who um, was helping me with water delivery, see my water tank over there, he blew the engine on the new truck, the old truck, the transmission went. So he hasn't been able to help me get water recently. And so it's been a little challenge. And unfortunately, when I go to Sanders for any supplies, their water machine in the store doesn't work half the time, their RO water machine. And so I've had to be buying 99 cent a gallon jugs of water a lot. So... Um, Wendy, I don't want to walk too far away. I wish I could see another stick. I'm not sure this is going to boil, guys, because I'm not sure I got enough wood in it. And I'm pretty sure I don't have any wood in the house right now. I didn't get this all together. Y'all get it, right? I'm, I'm human. Y'all know me. I... Do what I do. I do my best, but all right. Okay. I don't know if I lost everybody, but it just reconnected in the house. Okay. I didn't touch a button, you. <laughs> so French press. Most of you guys know what a French press coffee pot is. Um, the water is not, I'm listening. I can't quite hear the kettle boiling out there, but it is almost boiled. And my long handled spoon is outside, not inside. Um, and I'm gonna make the danger coffee. I do like this coffee. It's very, what's the word I wanna use? Gentle coffee? It's very tasty and gentle. Oh, the Kelly kettle's boiling. Let's see. Okay, carefully. I'm not touching buttons. Turn the camera around. We're gonna try to go get water out of the Kelly kettle into the coffee pot. Can, can you hear it whistling? How can I, let's see, I can put you here and hopefully you can see something. You can see, okay. So this is how you pick up a Kelly kettle because the fire's in the bottom and then you be careful with this because it's steam is how it made it whistle. And I'm very right-handed but it has to do with that autoimmune. And you use the, you use this hand, uh, you use this to pour with. So you pour like that. So, full coffee pot. And then, uh, 
the uh, the lid has a certain direction you have to put it on, but I just loosely put it on like that. And then if you want to cook on the firebox, then you put this on top and you continue to add wood to it and you can use that for a stove, okay? Um, we're not. I'm going to take you back inside where it's safe for the signal and we're going to look that that beef is really for all intents and purposes that's ready but i'm going to leave it for a little while oh i could have put just a little bit more water in there let's uh let's let's put just a hair more water in my coffee pot and by the way this coffee pot's a double wall stainless so you know, you can have hot coffee for a few hours. It's kind of nice. Um, okay. Okay. So. To turn off a sterno pan or make it not as hot. There's a couple of ways to do it. But if it's really hot outdoors, I've had, I know plenty about doing this, but if it's really hot outdoors, you can have a can explode. That's messy. So um, I will talk to you about that another time. But for right now, let's stir that coffee a little bit. Yum. And I'm making the mess right there, but that's what it's, that's what the outdoor kitchen's for, right? And sorry, that's right in your face. But let's walk back inside carefully. I need two hands. Wendy, are you... and then we'll put the top on the coffee pot and let it sit for four to six minutes or whatever it is. Are you in? Wendy's so quiet and everything that when she when she's behind me coming in and stuff, I can't tell if I can't see her. Okay. Um do this and I gotta stop sitting in this freaking chair okay you can't see what I'm doing people I know that but let's put the, the top on the coffee pot set the coffee pot on the wood stove so I won't spill it now for Sabbath uh, for um, Passover clean and I was talking to you guys about that last week um, I'm almost done I got to do the wood stove. Wow, that real cloudy right now. I got to do the wood stove. But aside from the wood stove, I've done pretty good at getting ready. In spite of the trip that happened that I haven't told you about yet. Okay, stool. There we go. I can sit up higher. Well, y'all got a good look right at my chin or something okay i turned the meat off the coffee is made all right Whew. let's see ah uh, let's see what uh i'm gonna plug in the battery on the phone there we go so let's see what your questions have been let me go back up Thank you all for coming back or staying or whatever you did. I appreciate it. Okay, I saw that. Life after stroke with Tom. There it is, Tom. I would go back and finish, but I don't want to do things alone anymore. I've been through being so crazy alone. I'm done with that. But, you know, enough's enough. And, uh, but that's what I did. What's the pink thing that helps me watch movies? It's one of the cheapest, like, Dollar Tree, uh, where did I put it? Dollar Tree phone stands, folds up like this. It's nothing, it goes in your bag, right? But um, it opens like this, <laughs> and you can put your phone or your tablet in it and set it on the, the only thing with my phone, my, um, Battery charger 
cord is in the bottom and this is not tall enough to leave it plugged in while I'm watching. So, but I can put the phone sideways this way and set it anywhere on a table and it works. So that's, that's what that is. And it was a dollar somewhere, maybe a dollar 20. Well, I don't know, maybe a dollar 25 now. Um, fire stick. So what time should we be there for the grill out? <laughs> I'm disappointed when I went today because of all the things that have happened in the last couple of months and this week, in, in fact. Um, I usually do a nice big um, Passover meal and share it with other people. And I buy lamb and I do a whole thing. And um, man, I can't afford it this year. Um, I bought some lamb enough for me and another couple of people, but it's not even, it's not even the kind of a piece of meat I would prefer to give company or anything, but I can satisfy the, what I feel like is the requirements or the have tos or whatever for me. And it's only what I believe, so it's no big deal. Um, oh, hi, Sally. Welcome. You found, an, Sonia, found another cinnamon coffee. Oh, okay. I love hazelnut and cinnamon. When I go to, when I'm doing road trips and I go to a Circle K, they have cinnamon coffee and they have hazelnut coffee. And I learned how to mix them in the same mug. And so they're machines. You have to, they're all push button automatic machines. And so I get a large cup, not the biggest, biggest one, but the second down. So a, a pretty large cup. And I put a, a regular cinnamon coffee, leave room, and let it fill up until that finishes. And then I put hazelnut and I set it the same way for regular cup leave room and it has has a little has a little red red button with an x where you could stop it making more coffee and so i let it fill until the cup's almost full and then i stop so, hey stop barking please i didn't see anybody i heard it but i didn't see anybody i think it's the neighbors and it's fine so that's um I can do nuts. Yes, I can. And I can do, like I said, hazelnut cinnamon is my favorite. So Lisa touched a button. Yeah, right. What am I making? It's my food for the day. It's a pound and a half of beef stew beef that, well, that came out in English, didn't it? Of beef stew meat that I bought on sale this morning at seven o'clock. I was at the grocery store this morning so I could get water, hoping that I would get all the dishes washed before I started the live stream. Hey, you know, I do my best and uh, it didn't all happen. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's what I'm making. It's my food for the day. I will have a pound and a half of beef today and I will have one avocado today. And some coffee. Um, I'm, I've been reacting to the trip I took this week. There's more to say, but let me check the rest of your messages. So yeah, no, it doesn't store movies. I have something else for storing movies, but I haven't used it. I was just trying to block somebody. Okay, that's fine, whatever. Thank you guys for catching that. My moderators are great. Okay, so now, are we ready to talk about the Chevy Tracker? Because some of you saw on my Facebook group, which I think is the only place that I post it so far. I was in town last week pretty, I've been pretty depressed. Okay. And some is weather, obviously, now that I've seen it really clearly, some is weather. And some was, I don't know what the freak I'm doing. I have no direction. I have no goal. I have no focus. 
And when I'm like that, I just, I don't know what to do with myself. And so for years, I've had, you know, three to five year goals and stuff like that. And for ever since I found out I had MS or autoimmune, because I don't believe all this stuff, but whatever. So, um, uh, I, I didn't, I just got distracted by a message I saw, a, a question I saw. Hang on a second. Um, so over on, on my phone, on the right hand side, if you can't find the thumbs up on the right hand side, there's some stuff. And I know one of those lets you put hearts and stuff scroll up over across the screen. I don't know. Um, so, so I've been, no, you, you know, I know me and I pay attention to me pretty well, but I've just been like, ever since the autoimmune diagnosis or maybe a little before that, when I got that super sick uh, in Quartzsite that year after I fed so many people, so much food and and then I almost died that same night and nobody even knew I was sick and I was so alone and so freaking sick. And then somebody stuck me, I couldn't even walk. Somebody stuck me in somebody's nasty rig and I just lost all my gumption. I lost all my focus. It was like, I don't know what I wanna do. I'm just waiting to find out what I can do what I'm gonna be allowed to do. What's God gonna let me do having something like this, right? And then when I kind of got, there's a hummingbird at the hummingbird feeder. Um, and then when I got brave and I decided to um, ask my friends if I could go with them to Baja, and then I was able to go. And uh, I know there's an awful glare there, but there's a hummingbird playing around the, the bird feeders over in the tree. And he's probably gone now. I think he's gone, but I wanted you to see. So that's what I see out the window when I'm talking to you on the phone. I have a magnet that's screwed to the wall and uh, the phone signal is the best right there. So anyway, so I was in town and I'm kind of don't have any focus and I had been very depressed and I went to the shop to Stan's auto and uh, I said, Stan, is it time for me to just sell everything and just start over? Because I don't know what's going on, but uh, come on over the winter, I've gained a little weight by trying to eat rice and beans and experimenting with other foods. And I'm not happy with that. And I'm not, the, you know, and the, I did the test of the eggs from the chickens that I had. There's more to that, yes. Um, and I'm super allergic to chicken eggs. So I was like, I just, I can't anymore. I can't do this like this. I'm so unhappy. I'm so, I don't want to be fat and old and stuck. And I can't leave and I do... And Stan goes, um, it's not about starting over and selling your place necessarily, but he said, you need your tracker here. And I was like, yeah, but we talked about it. I need a thousand dollars to make the trip. And he goes, well, how much have you got? And I said, 700 counting what you've got here at the shop and the fund that was started at the shop. And he goes, I got your back. Let's go. And I was like, what do you mean? Let's go. And I said, oh, he goes, what do you have to do to pull yourself together? And I said, well, um, do you mean like next week or something? And he's go, and he said, no, like now, let's go gas up the truck and let's go. Yes, I love those kind of surprise trips. But I've been out of touch for a minute. So I wasn't completely prepared. And I don't have my normal vehicle with me. So I only have, I have stuff in the vehicle. But I'm not like, crap, I'm like, crap, I can't just like, oh, yeah, let me get my other pants and, uh, you know, not like that. So it was like, okay, well, I didn't come home. So I called a couple of neighbors if somebody would come tend to the chickens for me. 
And then the lady who wants the chicken said, yes, but can I take them? Because you can't eat the eggs anyways, and I need them. And I was like, well, if you're prepared, this is fast. So while I was gone, she came and took the chickens to her house. And um, we've still got details to do, but yeah, so the chickens are gone. And so Stan and I got in a truck within a few hours of what we said, and we went to Nevada, 1,460 miles round trip in two days. Slap in the truck overnight. It was cold. It's in the 20s up there at night. They had had snow Thursday or Friday. We got there on a Tuesday, I think. They Sunday they had their their whole yard had been flooded out. Um, I have some pictures, some stories I could tell about that stuff. But anyways, we got up there, and I know Jeremy had asked Mike if he would pack the tracker up with stuff because we didn't know what we were doing and everything was kind of on hold. And I didn't know if he had done it or not, but I send him a, a text message and said, surprise, we're on our way with a trailer. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'm working. And I was like, well, we know you're working and we'll take our time and we can sleep in the truck and I mean, and we get there and it's nighttime and he's getting ready to go to bed. And we're like, no, we're exhausted. And luckily I had grabbed an emergency bag out of the blue car that had, let's see, Linda and Jason had given me um, a campfire po poncho and I had a couple of emergency sleeping bag things. And I just grabbed that bag and stuck it in the truck. And I'm glad we had it because otherwise it would have been too cold sleeping. But um uh, we got through the night. Yes, we were sore. Wendy travels wonderfully. Oh my goodness, she's such a good traveler. I, I, she's incredible to travel with. That's all I got to say. And she only barked once while we were riding. And the one time while we were riding that she barked, she had to go pee really bad. And so I think we stopped 10 minutes later and she held it the whole time. But as soon as we stopped and she got out of the truck, she just was like, you know, so she did really good. And so that training I've been doing, trying to train her, I wanted her trained to bark one time. That means you got to go pee or you need outdoors. And um, so it worked. So yay. So um, yeah. So we went and we got the, we went and we got the tracker. So the tracker is in St. John's at the, at Stan's Auto and Diesel right now. Now, two full days of driving in a truck with another person. And overnight in St. John's before we got, before we left. And then an overnight when we got back because even if you're not the driver, that much driving, you're exhausted. It's just the way it is. So there's a lot of, um, there were so many freaking, it's not like it's quiet in the truck. There are lots of conversations and Stan needed to tell stories and he's trying to decide about retiring. And so there's all these conversations and then there's the, you know, past relationship things and the, current people that are around us conversations and the, you know, how I, everything just, you know, it's the way trips are. It's the bomb. I missed her. I love to freaking travel. End of story. Where's the coffee pot? It's time to plunge the coffee. You can't see me. I don't think. No, you can't see me. Let me walk over here. Wendy is on the floor having a chewy. Wendy loves more than anything. This coffee pot has turned out to be a nice one. And I just like, I thought the wood was pretty. Wendy loves these particular pig ear things. They're water buffalo ears. She loves these. So I bought five of them. There's a few here. Um, she just, we just keep them off to the side when I'm busy like talking or something like I'm doing right now, or the phone rings, 
she goes over under that chair over there and um, she she just works at chewing on her chewy. That's what she does. So this is a double, this is a double walled insulated. So, you know, so this coffee is really good coffee actually, but, um, and it will stay hot in here so I can have a little bit. Now, what I did first thing this morning, cause I've been sick, ish, sick. Sick's a relative word, okay? So road trip, and road trip food was a challenge for me, the way I eat and whatever else, right? And since, okay, since I don't have to cook for the chickens anymore, it was like, okay, and I can get out and the weather's better. It was like, okay, as soon as I can afford to, I stock back up on meat and I go right back to what works for me and where I feel my best and where my weight evens out without me even trying. And that's the carnivore stuff. And I'm going to be able to fudge a little, I, and I don't mean fudge in a, I'm going to be able to eat a few berries when I want to. I will be able to eat, I can eat goat milk cheese, but I don't do well with the goat's milk itself. I feel like I gain weight. Um, and I don't do it very often to have the goat milk cheese, but um so anyways, there's some things I can have and like the avocados and the, the fruits and things, I'll be able to have some, but I'll be careful, okay? Because over the winter and especially the last couple of months cooking for the chickens and not being able to get out of here at all, plus my money being so tight, um, I was starting to eat white rice quite a bit and crap, I just was like gaining weight. I want to gain weight. So, um, and then the road trip food didn't help. Now it didn't make it horrible, uh, as far as weight goes, but I was struggling to find being in, 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 um, gas stations and truck stops and stuff. I was struggling to find clean beef jerky. The very first spot we went to now in St. John's, I had trouble buying clean beef jerky before I left. But I bought some that was the cleanest I could get because Wendy hadn't eaten and I needed her. I wanted her to be okay as well. So I bought that and I unfortunately, I'm going to stop buying them, but I unfortunately, Dollar General here has got plantain chips. They're clean food as far as I'm concerned, but I reacted to them. I bloated pretty badly after eating a full bag. And I ate probably five bags in two days. You know, we, I, I can buy Stan a sandwich, but I can't eat a sandwich. So that's what I did. And so I was eating beef jerky and those plantain chips. And we went once to um, a restaurant and I had them make me a little hamburger patty. And I ate a, uh, plain English, dry English muffin, toasted, but dry. Um, English muffins don't have milk or eggs in them. And so I knew I could get away with that, but I'm always running a risk with my muscular stuff um, when I have gluten. So I really have to watch the gluten. And um, I've been weak, especially my leg has been weak since I got back. But it was week before that from all the depression and everything. So I know I feel like I'm doing a long explanation here, but um, I was really weak from all of that um, and feeling disappointed in myself that I was starting to gain weight again and stuff of that nature. But I already had decided as soon as I can afford the next month's stuff, I'm going right back to what I know works. So It'll be really good quality salt, ruminant meat, and water. And I can have sparkling water, um, but I'm probably going to go back to the Perrier I was drinking for a while. And so this morning when I woke, okay, so yesterday I, I was so tired. I got home and Wendy went straight to her little doggy spot and took a nap. 
She was so funny. She, well, first she did the run and zoomies all around outside, ran the whole driveway, stuff like that. And then she came in and she went to sleep. And uh, I was like, you know, I want to go to sleep too. I'm tired. I want a nap. But I was like, I, I just can't stop my mind from thinking because there's been so much talked about and happen and quick and what am I thinking? And so I sat, sat up for a little while and then my stomach started feeling weird. And I was like, oh no, what is this? So I made a cup of decaf coffee. Now it's not the good danger stuff. I want a sip of this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so danger coffee, by the way, uh, that's why I hit the, the button on the videos that puts in the description that I sometimes get paid for things. I got the affiliate for, I'm an affiliate person for both um, Amazon and I have my own store and I have an affiliate with the Danger Coffee Company. And so if you buy coffee through my link, from Danger Coffee, if you want to try it, um, it's mold-free and remineralized and has electrolytes. So um, it's expensive. I wanted to try it. I like it. I think I'll try to keep some around. It's not going to be my everyday coffee because of how expensive it is. So, um, okay, so that's the blip about them and why you see that in the in the descriptions below my videos. Because I do technically, if you buy coffee from them, I get a little bit of money off of my own order of coffee. So um, the, but the road trip food that I basically ate most of was not the cleanest um, uh, jerkies. They had, some of them had 2% sugar and stuff. I did my best to stay away from citric acid. I'm really reactive to citric acid or allergic or something. Um, it's bad. I, I, I get pretty sick quick. Um, so I tried to stay away from those things, but once I got home and I started to like decompress, Wendy was taken care of. She was asleep. And <laughs> what has she got outside? Oh, she, ha she has a very dirty chewy. She must have buried that chewy in the ground outside. She buries things. She's so funny. Anyway, um, so she was resting and I got to rest a little bit and my stomach started gurgling and I was like, no. So all that road trip food that I had that had stuff I'm sensitive to, that all came back on me yesterday. It was really bad. I was bloated bad and had, you know, not nice bathroom stuff, some disaster pants things and, you know, TMI, right? But it was pretty bad. So I didn't feel good yesterday at all. I napped a couple of times. I did some stuff, but then I, I napped. I washed all the windows, um, getting ready for Passover and stuff. And then, so I went to bed early last night. <laughs> Wendy's. Let's see if I can show you and not lose the signal. Wendy is, can you see her between the chairs over there? It's so tiny. Oops. Can I make it bigger? She's, she's burying another Chewy over under the trees over there. She's so funny. Anyway, so, um, uh, so yeah, so I, I didn't feel good at all. And I was going to bed last night going, yeah, I got to stay away from spices. I got to stay away from everything for a while. And uh, woke up this morning just going, oh, am I going to be able to do today? Am I going to be all right? And decided to do my old standard. When I first started carnivore, I used to just do hot water with Redmond's salt in it. And that's what I did this morning. And this, this is... The, ne the second thing I've had today, and it's what time? It's uh, 11 o'clock. So I've done good. I got up at 
So um, that's that's pretty good. And of course, doing the hot water with salt did make my stomach feel better. So um, that's I'm on I'm on that road of things improving. So more questions. I need more questions. We usually go about two hours, so we got a, a, around 25 minutes more we can do ish. So more questions would be good while I drink some more of this danger coffee that I do like. It's just smooth. And um, he, he puts, he says things about this coffee being like ceremonial grade coffee or something. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you, but you know, I lived in Central America. I lived in Costa Rica and I've, uh, I've roasted my own beans in a fry pan. So, and cacao. So, you know, I know coffee and this is good. It does taste good. And I'm glad that he's done a mold free. Um, but I did the testing and I may be sensitive to moles, but I'm not allergic or something else because everything came back negative on toxic molds. So, of course, finding that fungus under the bed in here and getting that out of here probably helped a lot. So, yeah, more questions, please. Um, what more can I tell you about food and things? Um, when I don't have enough water for washing dishes, I will use a good quality baby wipe that has very little ingredients. I tend to use Huggies, Simply Clean, I think they're called. I tend to use those. The ones with only water, not good enough, but you know, I don't really like having all these things around, but it's what I do. I will wipe out my dishes, my cup, whatever, with a baby wipe first, and then I can rinse it with water and I don't have to use soap and things like that in order to make sure it's clean. That I will do that. Now, cooking and having meat and things, you wanna make sure the meat smells are off, especially if you're in, you know, bear country and stuff like that. So I always carry a scrubby with me and I usually try to um, keep my food items a little away from where I sleep, if that's at all possible. Now, inside vehicles, it can be safe inside my white tracker with a removable fiberglass roof that has little gaps. I figure the bear can smell whatever is inside. So I try to put some, I, I'll hang a bear bag outside like we did when we were hiking. I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. I've done it. I, you saw my little keyboard when I was like going through that backpack hunting for the thing. Anyway, um, the tripod. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start designating some time toward the process of trying to write a book. I don't really know how to write a book. Um, and I used to edit books for people, although they were medical textbooks. That was a whole other thing. Um, I think there was another question. Um, Kate, it was Kate. When is Passover? Passover is actually tomorrow from, well, tonight at sunset through tomorrow sunset. Um, your mom's family was Jewish and your grandma always did a big meal for the Passover. Yes. So the night to be much observed is what I've been calling it my whole life. Um, it is the same thing as the Jewish Seder. I'm not Jewish. So um, I came to this as beliefs from my study, from my religious studies. So, um, I keep the night to be much observed, which the Jewish people would call Seder. That would be tomorrow night's Monday night's dinner. And then starts the, um, then starts the uh, feast of unleavened bread. And so you don't eat any leavening products and you clean your house and make sure they're not in your house um, for that full week. And that ends, I've forgotten exactly. I didn't, I've forgotten exactly. I wanna say it's, it's close to Monday or Tuesday next week that that ends. And so 
I did order, I did order um, matzah. Somebody asked me the other day when I was talking about matzah, they were like, what the heck is matzah? So I ordered, I ordered matzah for tomorrow night dinner. And I had to buy three boxes to get it. So I'll be gifting somebody some matzah because of the, the it's wheat and water. And um, so with my gluten, my health issues with the gluten thing, I'll be gifting these to somebody. But um, I have enough for dinner tomorrow night and I'll have a small piece myself and I'll be careful because it's Passover and it's the once a, once a year thing. And it symbolizes for me, in the way I believe, it symbolizes what Christ's sacrifice. And so it does symbolize um, like people do for communion, which I believe we only do once a year and that you do it at Passover. And so for me, it's um, uh, like, you know, a piece of Christ's bo broken body and you share a glass of wine around. Um, and I say you share. It's not about having a lot of wine. It's not about having a glass. It's about having a sip of wine like people do in a communion service. And so I usually try to get the smallest amount of red wine I can get. And we just use one glass and we pass it around in a circle when I'm doing what I'm able to do. I don't know if we'll get near wine because I'm not sure who I'm going to be able to have Passover with tomorrow because you're not really supposed to do it alone, but whatever. Um, I'm going to do my best. Okay. And whoever I'm near that I'm able to do that with a lot of the people I know right now are in different stages of recovery process. And I don't want to take wine in front of them and have that be a problem for them. So I'll, pray about it and do what I think is best. Well, I'm glad I'm an inspiration because otherwise, what the heck am I still alive for? Because it's not exactly fun. <laughs> I have done fun things, but some of the things that go with me are not fun. To me, it's not fun when I get... You know, like all day yesterday, I'm excited, kind of excited to be home, kind of excited that I got to go on a trip, kind of excited that I know people care about me and stuff like that, you know, but, um, and that I didn't make up stories or whatever, because whatever. Anyway, um, and so I come home and the weather's good and everything. And I'm like, oh, I should get up early and go walk. And I did. Okay, I did. And I am exercising my left side, which is weak and all of that. And so, um, but then when I got tired, it was like, oh crap, I'm tired. Oh crap, I'm, I don't feel good. Oh crap. I bet it's all that crap I ate. I need to be more prepared. I need to have something somehow that can keep me okay when I need to take a trip. If I had realized how many hours it was going to be between the idea of let's get in the truck and actually leaving, I should have like gone to this grocery store and bought a cheap bag of beef patty hamburgers and gone to the park or something and just cooked a bunch of them up and just taken all that cooked meat with me on the trip would have been much better than what I did. But I think of it until afterwards, and I didn't have convenient stuff to do that job with. And it's not that I couldn't have figured it out. It just didn't. You know, sometimes you space crap, and then you deal with it. But I don't want to go through road trip food like that and be that yuck for a whole day or more. I could have done better. So I'll do better next time because that's what I do is I just learn. Your grandma had, this is Kate. My grandma had special dishes. It was a nightmare. We had to change all the cupboards around. Yep. I love matzah. Uh, like giant crackers. Yep. A sip. 
my auntie didn't believe in Santa. I bet. <laughs> lots of lots of aunties. You know, their wine glass was bigger than my coffee mug. Yeah, I know. I, I get it. The whole bottle, right? But uh, I used to, at one point in time, try to have special dishes and and there were special menu items that I used to do. Oh, yesterday when I was out messing around, looking around the yard and thinking and, you know, the stuff you do when you come back after a trip. I picked my first spear of asparagus this year. Now, last year I picked three. Okay. But um, there was a spear of asparagus growing. The asparagus garden is doing great. How do you keep the meat while traveling with I think you mean without refrigeration. I bought, no, I had, my therapist has a fund for her client. Poop, poop, I moved the phone. Refrigerator or a freezer. Turn back around, you can see me again. There we go, where's the magnetic thing? There we go. So I do have a refrigerator now. I struggle off and on, you'll see it on my videos. I struggle off and on with powering it because of the small battery pack and the way it's quirky way that it works. But let's go on to some of the other options. So when I do not have refrigeration at all and with me eating meat centric, okay, because I can't eat eggs at all. And by my belief system, I believe in eating kosher. It works better for me. It helps me to, you know, it, it's another thing. So I'm not necessarily strict kosher the way like Orthodox Jewish people would be. But when I say I'm kosher, um, is it Deuteronomy 14? I would have to go look. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. But in the Bible, there is an area, and it's, I think it's Deuteronomy 14, where um, it is described what the foods are that are healthy for us to eat. And in that clean and unclean meats conversation, it explains that you eat um animals that have both a cloven hoof and chew their cud, that would be ruminant animals. That's the cow, goat, sheep, deer, bison, camel. Uh, in other countries, there's other animals, antelope, all, all those kinds of animals. And that in, in other parts of the world, okay, in another term, they're called um, ruminant meats. So I, I will eat that. That's said in there. And if I was to eat fish, you're to eat the fish that has both fins and scales. So I won't eat a catfish because it doesn't, it has fins, but it doesn't have scales, it has skin. And so I won't eat that. But I'll eat bluefish, which is the bomb for a fish chowder, let me tell you. But it it has both fins and scales. So do salmon, so do tuna, so do other animals, I mean, other fish. So um, now personally, I really like kippered herring a lot, um, but I don't eat fish much right now. Uh, working on these health issues and being careful, I tend a lot toward that lion diet idea. But after doing it for six months straight and then adding some things, um, Iris is saying, and my shrimp is not to be eaten. Yes, dear. Uh, along with pork or bacon and things of that nature. Yes. But now I grew up with beef bacon. It was a thing. And, and in Pennsylvania, you could still buy beef bacon some places. In fact, the last time I was in Pahrump at Walmart, you could get beef bacon at Walmart. Um, I was surprised that I went and bought like three packs to travel home with on my way home because I hadn't had it in so long. And I was like, oh, it's not that big a deal. I'd rather have a steak. 
<laughs> but it does taste good. So there is such a thing as beef bacon. And um, let's see. So, and then the, the birds, you can eat songbirds. There's a certain classifications of how you can eat the birds and things like that, whatever. Um, and one of the other things that from that biblical reference is, is that you don't have dairy and meat mixed. And the reason for that is, is because what if you don't know where you got the dairy from and you ended up boiling a, a baby animal in its own mother's milk? That would be, that would be a bad idea. That would be not nice in your ethics. And if we're trying to be loving the way God's loving, that was one of the things God said. That was why he said that. So, um, yeah. So, okay. So I did not get back to the conversation about no refrigeration and eating so much meat. So, yeah. Um, like Kate just said, pickled herring, I can't do that. Uh, I, I don't like it. To me, it's nasty. Uh, but she's saying pickled herring, uh, salmon with everything, meat soaked and salted. Yes. Um, so I used to preserve all my own meat and stuff like that. Um, I used to smoke over a, an open fire when I was in Central America. I learned from the elderly people in the village I lived in um, how to keep meat for the longest period of time possible without a refrigerator. And we're talking meat like one of the neighbor's cows fell down the hill so they had to butcher it. Then they walk around the village and who wants what part? And whatever part you have, I was like, well, so now some old lady needs to teach me, how do you do this? Y'all have only had refrigerators for two years. Somebody still knows. So the elderly women taught me how to preserve meat. So I know how to do that. Um, and it, it's a process of boiling and salt and never putting a spoon that has, only using a clean spoon, never a spoon that's been in anybody's mouth in the pot ever. And the very last of the meat and juice that you use is super salty. And so it makes like a, it makes like a good kind of spaghetti sauce thing that you can um, eat over something else. And so, um, but they didn't waste any of it in the process. All right, be careful, Wendy, the cattle are out. We, we have free range cattle and I'm not fenced in enough yet. So um, she will bark at them and they will stay away. I watched her chase a, a, her, a, a pack of coyotes away the other day. Yeah, was it concerning? Yes, but she got a mind of her own and there's not much I can do. And they didn't get her. And I'm trying to train her and, okay, that's a sidebar thing about Wendy. But back to the meat thing. So meat and the way I eat without refrigeration. Avocados, get them green. Keep them just out in the air, but in the shade until they change color. If you need them faster, you can put them in a brown paper bag or you can wrap them in like a kitchen towel. Now, not a bath towel because of the fuzz, right? But you can just wrap them in a towel and set them more close to the sun or something, and they'll ripen a little faster. Um, and so avocados to keep, no, no big deal. Um, I can keep fruits and things of that nature um, in either a silver bag or some insulated thing or a cooler and get a wet, kitchen towel. Now, linen or cotton better than the fuzzy kind. I don't, I don't even like the fuzzy kind. Microfiber towels, eh, they're only a dollar so much. I don't know. But a good cotton kitchen towel or a linen kitchen towel. And I, I mean like a nice one. You don't have to pay a lot of money for it. You can get them from the, um, you can get them from the thrift store or something. But um, a decent kitchen towel, soak it in water, set it over the top of your open thing, 
container of fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, set it in the shade. And then as air moves across it, now if it's super hot and it's still air, put your little rechargeable fan so it blows air across it. And that will keep things cooler. And at night, if you need to set it outside, set it outside. But I, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I should probably do shorts and show you guys, but I just haven't been there. I haven't been in the right mood for doing all that. I'm not a big computer. Well, I have been a big computer person, but I don't own a computer anymore. So, and paying for extra apps and having the space to, y'all get it. Okay, so that's fruits and vegetables. Cooked meat, you can do the same thing with. It will keep up to three days already pre-cooked by you. Not meat that you bought from somebody else. If somebody else cooked it, don't trust it. But if you cooked it, and like I was cooking that meat this morning, that meat, any of the, if I can get more fatty meat than that, Oh, I could show you. I bought the lamb I bought. Hang on a sec. The lamb I bought for tomorrow. Um, I, okay, I took this out of the package already. Picked up for six bucks, okay? I did not. They had a great sale on T-bone steaks, but I don't have enough refrigeration to keep them cold. So, um, so sorry, Jeremy, I didn't buy any T-bones. Okay, so I bought this, this kind of trimmings when you can get them. So this one is from a, from a sheep, mutton or lamb or whatever. Um, but you can ask a butcher in any store. You can see what I paid for that. This because it's mutton in my area, twelve fifty, twelve thirty. Okay, it was upside down. Anyways, but if you can get beef like this, okay, when you cook this, oh, and this little refrigerator, I have it set on freezer mode, so. My goal is always, now I bought that meat this morning. So my goal is always to keep the meat as frozen as possible. And I keep a couple of these little things in this freezer. Now, when I can have this running well, this, you know, it's nice for me. Wait a minute, I, I'm trying to close the lid. Okay, I got it. So, um, so... When I have the refrigeration, then um, this refrigerator, I keep it in freezer mode as much as possible. And then all the stuff I put in it is frozen. You know, I, I get it frozen. But um, when, when I can get beef fat trimmings is kind of what they call it. Should be 99 cents a pound, okay? Um, and some grocers or some uh, butcher shops at the grocery store will just look at you kind of funny and what do you mean? The stuff we throw away? Yes. And sometimes I have to say, you know, like somebody would buy for their dog. That's what I'm looking for. And I don't mind if it has bones, but my, my pots, I can't take a very big bone. So if you can cut the bones smaller for me, if you could saw them up, I don't mind taking the bones. And so one day I was at the butcher shop when they were working on a big sheep and they had the leg bones and the guys brought out this like three foot leg. And he says, you want that for your boat, for your dogs? And I said, my dog's like this big. Can you just cut it in small? He goes, yeah, I'll just run the saw across it. No big deal. 99 cents a pound. I got like, I, I don't even know. It was so huge, but it was during the winter and I was able to give Wendy a couple of pieces raw 
And she took them outside and played in the sun and then buried them and did whatever. And then I gave some of the suet I gave to the chickens and some I hung in the bird feeder thing outside. And so you can do those things with, with that meat. But if you can get the beef fat trimmings from when they're like cleaning up steaks to sell is what you're looking for. Um, it's better than getting just the suet because the suet is going to be a lot of just big chunks like this, a big chunk like that, a handful of, of just straight fat that comes from around the kidneys. It's good. It's not a problem, but you're not getting any meat with it. And so if you could get the beef fat trimmings, there's meat included. And sometimes they're long chunks and you got to cut them up, but they will be like meat on top. And so it's, if you can imagine what the piece of meat looks like for bacon before they cut it, it's kind of what it looks like. And when I can get that for 99 cents, if I don't have refrigeration, I come straight back from the butcher in camp, cook it, and then put it in a low flat container so that as it cools off, the fat that has cooked off will seal the top of the container. If you don't disturb it, it's good for five days with no refrigeration. If you disturb it, so you take a spoon and you get some out. Don't eat out of it because your saliva will start a process that will make it go bad really fast. So never use silverware that has been not been washed. So, um, but when you take out your chunk for today, then you just kind of mash the fat back on top and it still will be okay. You can get away between three and seven days if you're careful, pay attention. But for me, it won't last that many days. Usually in eating it, like that package that I just showed you, I bought two of those so I could share some with other people. Those two, that's only one day's food. Because about, okay, I prefer to weigh between 160 and 180 pounds. I'm closer to probably up having gained some weight, I'm probably closer to 220 right now. But I was, you know, I was fluctuating around 200 for a while. And so um, if you're going to be carnivore more like me, right, you're going to want, and I'm wanting to like, get the weight back off. I want to eat closer to um, am I going to say this right? I'm right here, Miss Wendy. I want to eat closer to, is it, oh, I forget how to say it. Closer to a pound per, no, not a pound per weight. A pound. Okay, so say I want to weigh 150 pounds, you'd eat a pound and a half of meat in a day. That would be about what you would do trying to lose weight or aiming for losing weight. So uh, when I'm trying to maintain weight, not that I'm paying attention to it like that, because generally when you're only eating meat, you can just eat all you want. You're not going to like go get fat. But with me wanting to like get back to get my body cleaned back up from what I just did and let me get a little extra weight off from eating the rice. Let me handle this better. So um, I would now my goal is to eat about a pound and a half a day to get my weight back down. And then um, when I'm trying to even it off, if I'm like a pound 80, a pound 70, pound and a half is pretty good. So anyway, um, that's a good guideline for that. Now, let's see, what else was I supposed to be telling you about? Uh, foods without refrigeration. So when I went to Baja, I was only taking a cooler. And so Bernie bought me that cooler over there, that, that uh, moose jaw. Obviously, when you buy a cooler, it's better to buy a light colored or a white one rather than a black one because 
uh, white repels heat and dark colors suck heat in. And when you try to keep something cool, but um, a lot of the trip, I didn't have ice and I did buy block ice a few times when I had fresh food. Um, but I tried to keep in the shade in that cooler. I tried to keep a cool bottle of water, even if I didn't have ice. And then I would keep um, the goat's milk cheeses when I could find them. When I couldn't find them, I just you know skipped that. And then um, I would keep a jar of tallow or two. Hard to just pick up tallow in foreign countries uh, in a jar, you know, pre-made at the grocery store. But I know how to make tallow and it's such a simple thing. It's like no big deal. I'll go get suet from a butcher and I'll sit for 20 minutes, a couple hours um, every once in a while and I'll just make a jar full or make a couple jars full. And then I don't have to worry about it. But, um, and then I bought car carne seca. Now on Amazon, you can buy it. It's shredded. It's like the stuff. So you know what? tobacco chew cans look like because some some guys chew tobacco for for a while for kids they used to do shredded beef what's it called shredded beef um uh jerky it's it's the junk the, the left the dust left over from making beef jerky they would put it in little cans and sell it for kids and for people who aren't chewing tobacco, but it's in the same kind of little can. Anyways, you could buy a big bag, it's $35 and it's about five pounds of meat dehydrated down. And it's kind of rough, but I used that. I, I carried that in Baja. I took five bags of it with me before I crossed the border because I ordered it off of Amazon. And I didn't know what I was gonna have for a situation. And then down there, you can get carne seca everywhere and, and machado. You can find it all over. You've got to watch the ingredients because me with citric acid and stuff, you've got to watch the ingredients. But you could buy it down there, so it wasn't really as bad. Um, but um, I carry that and tallow because I can mix them together. And if I have dehydrated, no sugar cranberries or blueberries, I can mix them in or a little bit of raw honey if I can get good raw honey, but not. For some reason, Nate's raw honey, I, I don't know what it is. I just have this intuitional thing about that's not as raw as they think it is. I, there's something about that that's off to me. But anyways, um, and so you mix those things together in a bowl and it's pemmican. And um, so... I didn't pre-mix it and like make it into bars or patties or anything because it was too much work and it wasn't in the moment. I would just mix it in the moment. Like I'm hungry. Let's, okay, this is what I'm having for lunch. It's in, it's in the bowl. So that's the thing. Don't forget that when you're trying to keep meats without refrigeration, that any of the jerkies, whether you, you might be able to, you do you, don't do me unless it works for you. But um, uh, if you can have all those extra ingredients and they don't bother you, you know, go ahead, you know. But um, somebody said the other day, I said to somebody the other day, well, you know, you can cook jerky. All you're doing is rehydrating it. Just boil it. And then you have beef broth. And okay. And I keep, now I'm picky about my gelatin. I keep uh, kosher gelatin around. They they changed the package for, from years ago. But I keep kosher gelatin around. And sometimes I will just boil um, jerk, uh, jerky that is only beef and salt. And that's all. That's all the ingredients I'm, I'm wanting. And I'll add, you know, at the end of cooking, I'll add some gelatin to get the extra stuff for your joints. You know, I'm old. Whatever. I'm not old. I'm old, listen to me. I may be old in years, but I'm not old in the way I act. Anyway, whatever. So, um, yeah, is that helpful? Uh, do we need 
Do we have more questions about that stuff? Did I make it make sense? Um, I don't eat normal people food. So, you know, refrigeration to me is kind of a weird thing. Um, I'm allergic to milk and dairy, so I'm lucky that I can even do goat milk cheese because some people can't. Um, and, uh, when I want, okay, here's one. When I want uh, a, a treat, and I love ice cream, okay? But when I want a treat, there is one ice cream I'm willing to have, and it's Talente uh, non-dairy, and they only have two flavors, and sometimes it's hard to find the other flavor. Um, one is cold brew coffee. Yeah, that's the bomb. And the other one is... Uh, vanilla bean. And they have some sorbets that are good. I used to buy the sorbet for Passover. They didn't have it at the store that I went to this morning. I don't know that I'll do it. What I bought for this Passover instead, because I'm like bottom of the barrel budget this year and everything else, I just bought date, um, date coconut rolls. You know, I was like, okay, that'll take care of dessert. That's, that's good enough. Um, but anyways, Talente's sorbets are good. Um, they have sugar in them. So it's a treat. It's not an everyday thing. But I love that cold brew coffee one. And the vanilla one's my favorite when I can find it. They're made with coconut milk. They, they have like five ingredients or something. Um, coconut milk, cane sugar, not beet sugar. I don't do well with that white beet sugar stuff. But cane sugar, uh, you know, I've eaten sugar cane. I lived in Costa Rica. I mean, come on. You go to farmers, you go to the ferio on Thursdays in San Isidro de Alhamaral. And, um, and there's a guy there with sugar cane and a press machine. So he can press you a cup of sugar cane juice. Which I didn't have any trouble with that. And I was what, 160 pounds the whole time I was down there? I mean, yeah. I have tried ghee. I'm allergic. Um, I tried making my own. I was doing good with it, but I think I have a very, very super limited tolerance for any of the dairy from cows in the United States. Um, I have not tried any of the raw milk ones in the United States, but I'm afraid of that stuff. Um, because I'm the kind of allergic like I was with the eggs. I'm moments from calling the, the EMTs and knowing that I'm about an hour from dying. And it's so scary that those are the days when I really hate being alone. I'm like, even if there was had there been somebody else within yelling distance or if the neighbors were the kind of neighbors that I could just call them and say, I'm scared. Will you come sit with me until I know I'm getting better? Because otherwise I got to call the EMTs and I'm not ready to call them yet. You know, that's scary. That That's one of the reasons that I don't like being so rural. And it's one of the only reasons, but it's a big, scary one. It's like crap. I mean, I haven't got bit by a rattlesnake, but I'm saying it's sort of that same kind of thing. Like, crap, I got bit. Now, how? Now, what am I gonna do? You know. So I, I don't. Yeah, I do miss dairy products, especially cheese. Thank you. I had forgotten about rehydrating the beef jerky. Yeah, it works. Boil it. If you're making stew, just put jerky in instead of beef. I mean, jerky will last forever in a bag. And I did. Oh, it's right here. I can show you. When we were on the road, now this stuff's not cheap. I got, you know, preface everything with the way I eat's not cheap. But when it's all you buy, then there's a relative factor. So the first gas stop we made on the trip going up, I found this. And then when I went to Bashes and Sanders this morning, they have it on the shelf. And this, the ingredients, I'll get it close. Beef and salt. I'm okay with this. And of course, if you're making something, you, you know, 
when, when I was a little kid, they used to make chip beef on toast. Um, I think there was milk in that. We, uh, my family wouldn't have done it because of milk. Well, maybe my mother would have come to think, think of it, but I wouldn't because of because of the milk, unless I used coconut milk. Okay, um, but I'm just saying, it crumbles good. You can make your own pemmican out of it. You know, mix it with tallow. You put some berries in, put some honey in. Hi, Miss Wendy. You want to come up? Come. It's a big jump. One, two, three, jump. Oh, there we go. Say hi to everybody. You on the phone. You in the picture. So, um, um, yeah, it, it's just a matter of rehydrating it. It's still beef or meat. So, I mean, because they have other kinds of jerkies, all right? But I can't do all those spices and flavorings. I keep trying off and on, but I have to, but I have to be careful with the spices and flavorings. Um, I can't say that I never can do it, but I think it's sort of like Holy Day stuff or Passover stuff. If I cut some of that down to once a year, once every six months, I'd probably be better off. Um, I could have the ice cream more often than I could have the flavorings that were on some of those jerkies while we were gone that that really did disturbed my my gut so yeah not worth it anyways um so how am i doing on explanations can somebody let me know are we we doing okay um now iris i can occasionally it's expensive but i can occasionally have sheep milk cheese it's a little hard in my area to find the do they call it men Montano or whatever it is, cheese. It's a little hard to find, but Walmart does have it about $5 for a chunk, a small wedge. Um, if I'm going somewhere to visit with somebody, I might take that because it's kind of a special treat and it's good. But if I sit down with it, I'm eating the whole chunk. It's not very big. And um, what's the other thing I can once in a while have? Um, oh, if you can find a good uh sheep milk cheese a lot of people in the united states that have trouble with our dairy don't have trouble with the sheep milk or the yeah the sheep milk cheese manchano or however you say it is one and some of the fetas are another but it's hard you gotta really hunt and watch ingredients let me tell you read ingredients read ingredients and read ingredients and read the ingredients of the stuff you've been buying for years because every once in a while they just change the label and because sometimes they've had crap in it all along and they just didn't tell us. What brand jerky? Well, this brand is a good one, okay? This is uh, Old Santa Fe Trail. Um, Old Santa Fe Trail. Oh, I didn't tell you how much this was. This cost me 11 and change this morning, $11 for this bag. And uh, the bag says it's three ounces. And the back of it says three servings. Come on, an ounce of serving. Okay, if you added all of its water back in here, I'm thinking about it. If you added all the water back into this meat that would have been in it, that's probably one steak. So, you know, I'd love to have a bunch of that right here at the property, but, um, and not only that brand, like I said that, um, uh, mama, what was it called? Donia, Don, Donia something, Donia Maria, um, carne seca on Amazon, that stuff that worked so good on that trip to Baja. I need to keep that stuff around all the time. And I need to keep a bag of that in rotation, but I need to keep a bag of that in my car. Um, because I should be, I should on yourself, right? But I should be, every time I'm leaving the house and going to town, I should have my food for the day with me. 
so that I don't have to hunt for something I can eat. You know, I have fudged and I've gotten away with going in Circle K and eating an all beef hot dog. Um, but I ask for them to bring it to me frozen and I put it in their microwave so I get less cross-contamination because I'm so sensitive off of their roller machine. Um, but that I didn't do that on this road trip. I've done that before. But that's one of those things I never know. He, you know, the extra ingredients, it's not perfect food, but you know, it's better than being too hungry and eating the wrong thing. And then when I get really down to, I can't find anything and I'm hungry, I'll just go buy another coffee from a gas station, you know, um, and I'm drinking it black unless I happen to have coconut milk powder, which I buy in a three pound bag. Uh, and then a sweetener, but just recently I wondered why I was reacting to the stevia I'd been using for years. They started putting citric acid in it and I can't do citric acid. So, so much for that stevia. Wendy is wanting in and out an awful lot right now. That's why I keep getting up. Okay. Come on in here. So I'm busy, sweetheart. I see you finally ate your breakfast. Mommy's busy. Mommy having coffee. You want me to be done? I know you keep chasing the cattle away. You're doing a good job. What? You want me to go outside? We're all, I'm almost done with the people. Well, come here. Come here. Come, come sit with me. Come sit with me. There you go. I know. You're all amped up because of those cattle and all the birds around. There's so many songbirds right now. They're drinking off of the the water thing. I need to get them some more, some more um, suet blocks. But when I went to town, I didn't see any, and, and I'm broke right now. So <laughs> I'm not like without money, but I don't have much left. I don't know how much I have. I didn't look. I probably can fill the gas tank one more time. I don't know, but whatever. That's yeah. <laughs> But because of that, you know, I didn't stop and get bird food. Well, and I was rushing because I wanted to be back for you guys for the for the live stream. Okay, so I was saying on the sweetener factors, I've been wanting to be able to sometimes put coconut milk and something sweet, whoa, in my coffee. Shoot, that was a long job. Um, but... Like I said, I have the citric acid problem. So um, so now I can't do the stevias. I can do monk fruit, but it's expensive. And sometimes I can do, honey, I'm not coming out right now. I'm not done. Go ahead, I'll go play. Um, sometimes I can do, uh, I haven't tried it in a long time, but coconut, Sugar was pretty good when I did that, um, but it's not available locally. So I have to make sure I get that from somewhere else. What else would be a good sweetener? I've been doing some maple syrup. I mean, real organic, real maple syrup. Um, I found some locally. And so I've been doing some of that, but not real happy with my choices of sweeteners right now. And I don't want white powder that ran across some machine somewhere. So. Um, uh, of course I've seen, they're horribly expensive. I've seen the carnivore bars, horribly expensive. A, a sample bar is 1650. They figure one bar is like one steak. So it's like a meal for the average person, a meal for one day or some big guy, he'd need three of them, right? Um, uh, I was doing some protein, uh, carnivore protein powders at one time. No, Wendy, no. But the one that I had, I think had too much blood in it. And I don't want the blood. I had to... I had to figure out what the problem was with it. It wasn't really problematic. 
much, but I didn't like that part. So um, I probably should try the uh, Paleo Valley. Maybe that's what I'll do for my, no, I can't. I think it had citric acid in it because I think it had stevia in it. In the Paleo Valley's, um, come here, uh, vanilla bone broth, protein powder, uh, because I thought it might make a good, uh, coffee creamer, but, uh, I think, I think I looked it up and I can't. Anyways, eh, there's options out there, but you know why? You just, when somebody says, let's go to Nevada, like now, you just get in the truck sometimes. I, mean, I do. Why not? I mean, I figure it out along the way, but then I take notes for next time. Now, what could make this better? Okay, yeah. Having my food a little more together would have been better. And now, finding that I can buy that jerky locally, that's expensive. I know it's expensive. But dang, for when I can't get off my property, like during monsoons or during snow times, or when I'm out traveling and the refrigerator won't stay plugged in or won't just work or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to fight this thing forever. I'm the kind of person that usually, if it doesn't work the way I want it to work, it's gone. <laughs> so I've been working with this refrigerator a long time, trying to, you know, a couple of years, trying to make it work better for me so that I can eat better, so I can be better. So um, I think I've like gone round and round and round and round that. Any more questions? I get it tired this morning and I want to go eat now. I get hungry. You want to eat too? You want to go run around the yard again. Mama will go take walks around the driveway. We can do that. So more questions. I am so grateful that you guys come and go from my channel and you come out to the live streams and that we're able to uh, have these conversations and visit with each other and learn from each other. I'm so grateful that you bring your questions. I do have more, you know, I probably should show you how to make some things. When it works out so I can, I will. Um, I, uh, over the winter, I, work, I played with um, sourdough again. I have done it before. It wasn't with me, but I had Encorn flour imported from Europe so that I was getting European wheat and not anything grown in the United States. And I do not react to that. I made my own. I don't react to that like I do to American gluten at all. And so that's something I can do, but I'm going to need to be careful with how many, <clears throat> how much carbs and stuff I let myself have. So uh, uh, because of it being Passover season, it that's another thing that um, with my kosher tendency belief thing or my non-religious kosher belief, whatever, um, every year I throw away my sourdough starter and start over. And so I think there's something to that because why else would we be guided to do that through that reference in the Bible? And um, I think that the fresher bacteria must do something for our gut buddies. So um, that's that. That's that. Love y'all. I don't see any more questions. I don't see any problems with the signal right now. Nope, we're doing good with that. Oh, I'm seeing that Tom sent me a message privately, which I wish he had sent in the in the um, in the uh, chat instead, because he's on here, I think. Anyways, the answer to your question, Tom, I'm at 6,500 feet elevation. Yes, I have stayed here all summer many times. Is it possible? Yes. Do I like monsoons? No, just like snow. I don't like getting stuck with the mud and not being able to get out. Um, 
uh, the weather um, temperature wise, I've never seen it be a hundred on my property. I've seen it in the nineties, but you know, with shade and um, a little air moves most all year round here, I usually do pretty well. So I could stay here. And because of my goal, the one goal I have had through all this time is to get back to debt free again, because I had borrowed some money for vehicle problems. And um, I'm at under two, no, I'm under $3,000. I don't remember exactly $2,600 or something is what I owe. Um, and uh, it will be paid off by early, early next uh, year. I can't remember if it gets paid off in January or February of next year um, at the rate that I'm doing. That's if I can't double up on the payments. But that goal is, is a goal. It's something I work at. And because of that, I may choose to not travel much or to only buddy travel or to try out this whole weekend warrior kind of thing. Um, while Stan and I were driving, we talked a lot about you know, doing some of the Zuki events and um, just going and rock crawling with some of the Zuki guys. And, you know, it's fun to sit around the campfire at night and or in the morning for breakfast and talk about, you know, engine stuff and whatever with the Suzuki's because I'm learning so much. I don't know how to wrench it myself, but I understand more stuff by having been around those guys. And so maybe I can talk Stan into doing some of those trips with me and they'd be like weekend things. Um, so maybe that can happen or Jeremy or somebody. Jeremy's busy with a bunch of other stuff. I don't know. But anyway, or fishing trips or just going camping in Greer or something. It's all good. It's all good. Well, y'all have, it's uh, been two and a half hours, it looks like. Um, Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week. Pray for each other. Think about each other when you get a chance. Um, uh, I can't think of any really serious things going on right now. I don't know what's going to happen with the tracker yet, but it's here. It's at the shop. That's a big relief because it's closer. Um, but there's conversations to have with the guys about when we start doing anything. And uh, I know, I'm pretty confident that when they get the chance at the shop, if they're not too busy, eventually mine will get pulled in and they'll start looking at stuff and figuring out a game plan. And uh, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And so next week, same bat time, same bat channel. We'll try it again and we'll see if we can keep the signal going. Eventually, I got to do something about the phone. I'm leaning heavily toward trying to get a visible service instead of trying to do Starlink right now because I don't know what I want. And that seems more reasonable in the moment. Um, I have been offered a free setup from Nomad Internet for sponsorship and a certain amount of advertising. But... They, it's a limited service, like not a limited service. It's they, they would give it to me free for a year if I do so many videos and whatever. And um, people who buy the same service under my code would get 10% off or something like that. All sounds good, but after a year, then they start charging me for the same service. And it's and it's too expensive a service for me to afford on my own. So uh, that's a whole thing. So letting you guys go. You have a wonderful day. I haven't seen any more messages. I don't know why. Um, but I love y'all. Have a good week. And we'll talk soon. Ciao.